Well, good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. All right, today we are gonna do some Kydex sheaths on a kitchen knife. All right, so before you get started doing Kydex, you wanna have everything prepared. Once it's ready, you need to move pretty quick. Uh, we start off with our tape. We get our blade and we put two layers of tape on there and it just helps to thicken out the blade. So it's gonna mean that it's slides in and out. It's not a lot of thickness increase, but it's that little bit. Um, and it just helps it to slip in and out without grinding against the sides of the sheath. Once we've got it taped up, we use a box cutter, Stanley knife, um, utility knife, whatever you want to call it, and just trim the tape from the edges. So we've got nice clean finish on it. I want to have a couple of clamps to clamp up the molding jig. A ruler helps you cut everything, get it measured, and a pen to mark with. I normally use a pencil, but I figure the pen's gonna show a better mark for all of you. Next up is my forming box. Now this one is just homemade. As you can see, it's a couple of pieces of MDF spread out with some hinges on the back. Everything's held together with Gorilla Glue. Inside of it, we've got some foam. Now you can get the proper hot molding foam, uh, which doesn't do what this has done and form down to the heat. I've done probably somewhere between 75, 100 knife sheaths in this. Uh, it's not at the stage yet where it's too loose. So I'm quite happy with this. And this is just exercise mat foam. I uh, just went up to the local uh, Kmart store. A similar thing over in America would be a Walmart. And just bought some exercise foam mats and just used Gorilla Glue just to stick it on the frame. Next up, we move into our Kydex. I buy my Kydex in large sheets, which is um, 300 or one foot by 600, two foot. They work fairly good for a knife. So as you can see, when I lay it on, yeah, I've got a bit of an off cut. That's fine. I use that then for small knives. So we want to have probably about three quarters of an inch or 20 mil to one side. And then we're just going to rock the knife over. Just so we're central. Measure that distance. And I always give it a little bit more. So that's gonna be 70 mil. Double that up, 140. Same down that end. From there, just a steel ruler on it, on the marks. Just a light cut three times. Bring it over the edge. Tricky to do on the bench while showing you guys. Just want to flex it over. And it snaps. Next up, we want to get our length sorted. Now, I normally go to the bolster. I'll end up cutting it down underneath the bolster. And I want to have a little bit. Again, probably that 20 mil or three quarters of an inch down there. Now 
there's our piece ready to go. That's going to go into an oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit. It's only in there for a very short amount of time. Um, you just want to watch uh, where it's hanging over the edges. You start to see a bit of droop. Once you've got that bit of droop, it should be soft enough. You come out and start molding it. Okay, working nice and quick. Make sure the spine of the blade's against the back. Fold down our press. And we'll put our clamps on. Okay, and we'll just leave that in there until the Kydex cools down. So just a short time later, it does not take long, about three, five minutes. Take our clamps back off. Okay, and there we have our molded shape. Now from here, we see where the blade is. Because I'm using pen. Careful. So I want to put my first rivet. The blade finishes here. I want to put my first rivet down a little bit lower. I want to have another rivet down here at the bottom. And then I'll generally go with another rivet in the middle. I like to have plenty of rivets and time to drill this thing. Now, although of course I'm showing one as I do it, I do tend to do them in batches. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of them over there. So knock a few out at the same time, just makes things a little quicker. Um, and I did find a supplier in the US for my rivets, which is absolutely awesome. Um, I can actually ship them in for a lot cheaper than I can buy them here in Australia. All right, so we just need to drill out the holes that we've marked. The next set, once we've got the holes done, is we're just gonna put a basic shape in place. So I know I wanna be about quarter inch, six mil, five mil, somewhere around there off each hole. Just join those up. Okay, so when we're cutting, we just take the knife out. We've got to cut into that handle area. And the bandsaw is a lot more danger than the drill to damaging the knife. With cutting at the shape, I only roughly follow those pencil lines. Um, they just give me a rough guide. I still leave plenty of meat on it and I will clean it up over at the belt grinder it takes it off really easily. Of course, you know, if you don't have a belt sander and a belt grinder, you can um, cut it out with a hacksaw, coping saw, or something like that, and you can clean it up with a file and then some sandpaper. I have the tools, so I use them. Hey, once I finish on the grinder, I just use a hacksaw blade that I've sharpened on one end. Yeah, you know, it's not devil, devilishly sharp or anything like that. Okay. 
okay. And all I'm gonna do is use it as a scraper and just clean up that inside edge just to make sure that I've got everything. Then we get to the holes. Same thing, just using it as a scraper. The next step, I just want to make sure that inside here is clean. We've got nothing left from where we drilled it or where we ground it. So just hold it closed. You're on that blade section through. Our last step of the cleanup is we're gonna grab a bit of uh, lint three rag cloth. And just gonna start it up at the top. Run it down through the center. Okay, pulling from the bottom. Just gonna draw that down through the sheath. And then at the end, just come out the side. That just helps to make sure I've got any dust or anything out from the inside because I don't want it in there scratching the knife when it goes in. All right, let's join it together. Here we are at the joining stage. I've already put one of the rivets in. Um, that's our little rivets. And at the moment, these are costing me 75 cents a piece. And that's buying a bulk of 100. So you can see why I was looking for another source for them. Um, place in America is selling them for 13 cents a piece which pays for an awful lot of shipping all right so if we put the rivet on top of this little flaring tool just makes it easier to press in the hole as they do tend to be a snug fit there we go. Okay, and now we have our flaring set up. There's a little anvil at the bottom. This bracket holds it all together. So we put it in, put the piece that we've already got on the anvil, put the flaring tool in and down the hole. Two hits will normally do it. And generally the anvil will come up with it. Again, and last one. All right, there we go. Now we just got to put the knife back in. And here we are, all finished up. You should have a bit of resistance to stop the blade from coming out, which this has got. Um, it's not a super tight one, but there's that bit of resistance there where you've actually got to make the pull for it to come out. Um, if it was a wee bit tighter in here, then there'd be a lot more resistance, but um pretty happy with the way this one is. All right, now all of my knives I make the Kydex sheath for. Uh, I just find it to be a safer option. A lot of people will send them off with a gift box or something like that, but then how does someone use it in their home safely? And to me, the Kydex sheath is the perfect way of doing that. Alright, so there we go. Thank you very much everyone for watching and bye for now.